not shown there are any. So on the links, when you go there, so that one has gone there, so you need to update. So it was only added this morning, so you just need to refresh the Scoot Extreme. Yeah. Guys, we might make a start. If you've got your device with you, uh, you can follow along in sections. Uh, there is, if you refresh your school stream, go to critical and creative thinking, there's a link there, or just go straight to the fourthi.com.au because I'll, I will go to the website um, and then this is where you can get your resources from afterwards. So not, not essential, but if you go there, uh, it'll be handy during the presentation. Start. Uh, welcome to Critical and Creative Thinking. I just do a quick survey. Stage three teachers, stage two, stage one, kindies. Okay, so that's pretty pretty fair spread. Guys, my name is James Phelps. My colleagues call me Jim. I teach at Epping Heights Public School three days a week, and I teach at Epping North Public School two days a week. I have been a class teacher. I've been a music specialist teacher, and for the last 80 months I've been the CCT teacher. We've even timetabled a new subject called CCT. And we base that on the premise that creativity can be taught and creativity can be assessed, which comes as a surprise to a lot of people. Um, I'm pretty excited that after 21 years of teaching, the Australian curriculum has come out and it's got the general capability of critical and creative thinking. I'm really excited about that. Um, I'm hoping in 15 minutes just to clarify what critical and creative thinking is, quickly remind ourselves why it's worthwhile teaching and to show you some relatively easy ways of bringing it into your classroom in a way that will engage kids and help kids in all, all areas of their life, not just school. Uh, this particular slide, these slides are on the website if you wanted to check them at some stage. On the website there are, there's a, uh, if you go down the menu there's teacher's kit. And the teacher's kit, you can go there uh, now or afterwards and download everything I'm showing you today plus more. Uh, so pretty much uh, my whole K-6 program is in there. Uh, we're teaching critical and creative thinking. There's all the teacher's documents and all the student resources, they're all in there, okay? Can I just clarify before we start, the resources I'll show you today that you can use in your classroom, they've actually been based on research. There is actually very little of primary school resources that explicitly teach critical and creative thinking. So what I've done is I've gone outside of education to some amazing researchers. Now, these top three circles, those six researchers between them have 250 years of empirical studies on how kids learn critical and creative thinking, how it can be taught. So all the resources you'll see today flow from that research, so they're, they're evidence-based that they will work with kids. Okay, I'll, I'll just clarify what is critical and creative thinking. So creative thinking is any thinking that we do when we generate ideas, that's the simplest way to put it. So creativity is not just the arts, it's any thinking we do when we are generating ideas or solving problems. Critical thinking is the thinking we do when we judge ideas. They can be our own ideas, 
uh, or they can be the ideas of others. And all of this is uh, in the teacher's kit if you want to check it later. But there are some elements of creative and critical thinking. Why teach critical and creative thinking? The main motivation for me is that creativity levels are dropping. Uh, I didn't have time to do a worm grab, but if I could have done a worm grab for you, it shows that IQ levels are going up 10 points every generation. But CQ, which is creativity quotient, starting from the mid-90s, is actually dropping. Uh, so kids now, comparatively, don't have the crea creativity uh, that kids might have had in the 1960s. And we know why that is, don't we? Because instead of uh, having all that free play time, constructive play, creative play, they spend most of their lives being entertained. Um, so 25 years ago, kids created their own entertainment. And those activities uh, do things for the neural pathways. So I'm passionate about teaching this to try and offset this diminishing creativity quotient. Because I think for any time in history, our kids, when they leave school, they are going to need to be fantastic creative problem solvers because they're going into a far more complex world than what we grew up in. I just want to show you a video which is barely three minutes. And if you've got uh, year four, five or six, uh, it's a great motivator to get your kids um, finding purpose in learning critical and creative thinking. So it's on the Why Teach CCT part of the website. A couple of videos there for teachers, the Ken Robinson, a couple of really good videos. And this one here, <coughs> I've shown to my four, five, six kids. Um, it only goes for three minutes, so I'll show you, but it's a great motivator to develop critical and creative thinking skills for your future.
Okay, the new Australian curriculum and the New South Wales Board of Study syllabus talks about the capability, great word, critical and creative thinking, capability. And to cut it short, the capability has three aspects. CCT dispositions, Australian curriculum talks about that. The CCT skills and the CCT strategies. Is the student willing? Is the student able? And is the student equipped? Uh, I'd like to start with the dispositions because for me, for me, they are the most important. And uh, I've been working with these with my kids in stage two and stage three. What are CCT dispositions? Uh, describe a person's inclination to use particular skills when faced with problems to solve, ideas to evaluate, or decisions to make. And uh, we've been watching Paper Planes, you know the video Paper Planes, fantastic Aussie movie, and the kids have a rubric of the seven dispositions that we're learning. And they uh, assess the main character Dylan and work out of those seven dispositions which ones does he have, and he has all seven. Uh, in fact, if you go to any hero or heroine in a school novel or a video that you're working on with the kids, the main character inevitably shows these seven dispositions. And when the kids see it in the character, they can then relate that to their own situation and start to be conscious of these dispositions and being this kind of person. So the seven dispositions are open-minded, flexible, risk-taker, resourceful, patient and persistent, ubiquitous and reflective. And uh, my students go really well with these. They remember them, they try and apply them, they talk to mum and dad about them, they tell mum that she needs to be more flexible. Uh, so they're going home and teaching their family, so they're right into it. And to teach them, I'm using uh, resources, which uh, can be found in that teacher's kit or on the website. My CCT dispositions. So there are seven classroom posters. Number one, I am open-minded. I consider ideas and opinions that are new or different to my own. So just be nice to your office staff, give them a couple of lint chocolates, and ask would they print these for you and eliminate for, uh, for you for your classroom. If you display them, the kids will notice them and begin to talk about them and apply them. I am flexible. I switch perspectives when solving a problem. I change my plan when new problems arise. I work in one school which has 60% Korean Chinese kids and it's working with a culture of tell me the right answer, tell me how to get the right answer. There's only one answer, that's all I need to find. What is the answer? And working with those kids, this is really helping them broaden their thinking about their learning. Uh, so that they pick up these dispositions, they're very teachable. Three, I am a risk taker. I try new ways of doing things. I am not afraid of making mistakes. Why don't you talk with your kids about that? You know, hands up, kids, if you are afraid of making mistakes, and talk about that. Because the research shows that if you're afraid of making mistakes, you won't achieve near as much uh, as if you show no fear. Number four, I am resourceful. I find creative ways to overcome difficult things. I improvise when I don't have the resources I need. I am patient and persistent. I take time to elaborate my ideas. I don't give up easily. In the research coming out of the States with this dropping creativity quotient, they noticed the big drop was in elaboration. Compared to the 60s, 70s and 80s, kids from the mid 90s on don't elaborate their ideas near as much. They'll go, finish, do you know what that? Finish, what's next? But we want them to elaborate 
you know, build, expand on, the, on their ideas or the tasks that they're work, working on. So we need to bring that to their attention and, and try and get that to happen a bit more. Number six, I am ubiquitous. So taking the idea that learning only happens in the classroom or at my homework desk, that my learning and thinking and creating can happen anywhere, anytime. Uh, I have hundreds of kids doing voluntary homework. It's just amazing. So they have their critical and creative thinking projects to do. They own them. They become really passionate about them. I don't ask them to do homework, but they do. And so they're learning everywhere, in every place. In the back seat, driving off to highways, uh, off to holidays. They are creating and learning. They are ubiquitous. And finally, I am reflective. One of the hardest dispositions to teach and learn uh, for adults as much as children. So, first aspect of critical and creative thinking are the dispositions. The second um, are skills. Uh, have you guys seen this in, in the Australian curriculum? They've got the four strands of critical and creative thinking. So what I'm doing at my two schools, we've broken it into six strands just to make it easier for teaching and assessing. So the student knows how to fact find. So I'm, I'm explicitly teaching the kids how to do that. The student knows how to generate ideas and solutions. The student knows how to judge ideas. The student knows how to plan. The student knows how to produce, put, that is, put their ideas into action, and the student can reflect. So they are the skills I'm trying to uh, teach with the kids. And they are taught in two ways. One way we're teaching those is the kids have to do a creative task for five minutes every day. Because those who diligently practice creative activities learn to recruit their brain's creative networks quicker and better. So the research shows we don't become creative overnight. We have to actually do something creative every day. If you know a highly creative person, they're creating something every day, whether it's of value or not. So the brain needs that activity. So what I've done is I've created, a, um, we have card boxes of cards in the classroom and at crunch and sit time each day and it's an alternative to silent reading after lunch. They go to the box and they pull out one of their uh, thinking exercises which we know over time will increase creativity levels. So they're all there, they're all fun activities, they're all based on the research uh, once again, a couple more then chocolates for the office staff. Asked for them in A5s, uh, laminated. And then uh, I teach each of these uh, activities to the students. And once they've learned them, uh, they, they then can just pick them up independently. I'm finding kids are doing these at home with the families at the dinner table. They don't need a computer. They don't need anything. They just need to know what the activity is. So there's quite a few there. Uh, most of them are K to six. Uh, they're kind of self-regulating for the ages. So if you want your kids to be more creative, if you if you're feeling frustrated with kids who are not creative at writing time, or visual arts time, or solving playground problems, try and uh, timetable five to ten minutes of these a day, and your kids after a term or so uh, start to boost their creativity levels. How are we going to time? Okay. Right, the other thing, the other pointy, other point of the aspect, three aspects of uh, capability was CCT strategies. So we want our kids to have dispositions, we want them to have the skills, but they need to have strategies, otherwise they won't know how to apply their uh, critical and creative thinking. So for strategies, By applying a sequence of thinking skills, students can develop an understanding of the processes they can employ whenever they encounter problems, unfamiliar information and new ideas. So the main strategy 
at my schools that we're working on are what we call the coloured thinking caps. These are metaphorical caps, they're also physical, actual caps that we use in the classroom. From the Australian curriculum there's that quote, okay there are six uh, thinking caps which follow a sequence. So the students are taught each of these thinking caps but they follow them in order. This is really helpful for 40% of kids who can't get started. It also helps kids become independent. It's a scaffolding. And the idea of the scaffolding is eventually we don't have to help the kids as much. They become independent. I'm finding this is working really, really well. We've started with a few small problems and a few small tasks. Now they're doing, uh, we have a project coming up called EPIC EPIC, where they're going to do a major critical and creative thinking project, but they're going to use their six coloured thinking caps. The coloured thinking caps are based on the Australian curriculum. There's the learning continuum from the Australian curriculum. There's our skills we talked about before. Uh, these are nothing like De Bono's thinking hats. De Bono's thinking hats are parallel thinking. It's about looking at an issue from six different angles at the same time. This is actually a sequence of steps that kids can follow. There are also black line masters in the teacher's kit on the website where the kids follow the questions on the black line master and it helps them order their thinking. And one of my students said, um, Mr Phelps, I realise the more thought I put into something, the better it is. So these thinking caps make the kids slow down. It makes the kids really think through what their task is. So black and white thinking cap, there is a black line master for it. What is the task? What is the problem? What's the purpose? What am I meant to produce at the end of the task? Probe, find out all I can about the topic or problem. Where's the proof? And perspectives, who will be the audience or end user of my product or solution? Kids love all the P words, they remember the P words, they have competitions to see who can remember all the P words. They're starting to internalise this uh, as it should be with the scaffold. After they've determined um, what their task is, we then go to the rainbow thinking cap. I have several of these caps, the kids love them. They put them on there like magic and they just brainstorm the most amazing ideas uh, compared to adults, they just come up with amazing ideas. Let your imagination go wild and generate plenty of possibilities. Pose lots of what-if questions, pinch old ideas, propose improvements. Don't judge the ideas yet. The kids like the fact that they can just generate half a dozen ideas and no one's going to judge them. Then we move on to the red and green thinking cap, the stop and go man. This is where they decide which idea they're going to run with. Once again, there's a worksheet for them on the, um, in the teacher's kit. <coughs> then they move to the pink thinking cap. They put on their pink uh, little visor and they plan how they're going to produce their project. Then they move on to the producing stage. They make a draft or a prototype. And it's here they work out how they're going to promote it or present it. But they're going to put it on Mum's Facebook page whether they want to present it to another class, whether they want to start a blog, whatever they want to do. And finally, the orange thinking cap. So I'm finding great success with year three up to year six. You could probably start year two, term four, on the coloured thinking caps. So that's an overview of the program I'm running with the kids, getting really good success. You're welcome to go to the website and uh, grab those resources. I'm just giving you a quick reference guide. I can't give you the manual in 30 minutes. If you want the manual, I'd probably need to come and talk to you for a day at your school. So it'd be, it'd be a day long workshop to train uh, class teachers how they could fully implement critical creative thinking into their classroom. I help the class teachers with their programming to bring in a critical creative thinking element. But all you have to do, guys, is in the teacher's kit, there's the learning continuum, kindergarten to year six. You're doing a, a unit on the Storm Boy, and you quickly go to your uh, year three and four band, 
and you look through there and you go, okay, I can grab that one, that one, and that one, and I'm going to bring that into my stormboy unit. So you just go there. They're pretty much uh, outcomes, the old, like the old outcomes and indicators, modes and skills. Okay. I put a lot of hours into this, so hopefully you guys, it's quick and easy for you guys. We've got five minutes left. Anyone got any questions? Uh, kindergarten teaches the what we, what I call the CCT crunches. A lot of those can be done with little kids. There's not a lot here for um, specifically the kindergarten because your critical and thinking in program is quite simple. It's a one-page document with one word, P L A Y, uh, and we can't we can't overestimate the value of play. Uh, for developing critical and creative thinking with our little kids. Absolutely. Absolutely. Absolutely, yes. Really, really important. That's why I do a lot of these activities with the older kids. We'll do five or ten minutes before we do our serious thinking. And a lot of these uh, play, very much play. How do you feel about critical and creative thinking being in the Australian curriculum? Is it one more thing to teach? No. It's okay? Yeah, true. That's true. K to six. That's correct. Uh, so one school is 18 months, one school, and the school I've been teaching this at for 18 months, it's now just starting to get some traction in the classroom where uh, teachers and the kids are now finding themselves turning to the critical and creative thinking uh, strategies for, for history, HSI, English and whatever. So after it's taken about 18 months, and that's with um, a short workshop and a day long workshop as well. Uh, far as we could tell when we started, we were po probably the first state school to start. We're also part of uh, Victorian education. They've got a trial going with uh, an online assessment uh, portal and we're part, of, we're part of that trial. So, like I said at the start, we can, we can assess this and the Australian Council of Research, Victoria Ed, They've worked really hard to create an online test, or several tests for each, each age group from year one up to year six, and I found them statistically valid. So when I mark the test, uh, half a computer mark, half a mark by me, I'm seeing 60% uh, score, yep, that matches the child in the classroom. So we actually, we have pie graphs and line graphs and bar gra graphs to show where the kids are at with their critical and creative thinking. So the Victorian Education Department has, it's called CCT Inside Assessment Portal. I'm going to add the link to the website soon. Uh, so if they're thinking next year they're going to roll it out for Australia, make it available for all of Australia. But at the moment there's uh, 20 or so schools trialling it and we're one of those schools. It's working really well. A few glitches but it, by next year it'll be good. And they've, they've done their research, they've done their homework. It really does assess critical credit. Thanks, guys. Uh, websites there, everything's there, wow. and more. And I'll update in about a month. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.
Yeah, absolutely. Okay.